Richard Heinberg suspects that number is wrong and that America's coal reserves are far smaller. He is a senior fellow with the Post Carbon Institute and author of Blackout, Coal, Climate and the Last Energy Crisis. Richard, thanks so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank you. So we've all heard of peak oil, the point at which peak production is reached and begins to decline. The debate keeps going on over that, whether we've reached it or, wh or when we're going to reach it. Do you believe that we are close to peak coal? Well, there have been um, uh, several studies uh, released just within the last three years that suggest that global coal supplies and U.S. coal supplies are much smaller than had been previously estimated. And these studies come from the U.S. Geological Survey, the uh, American Academy of Science, and from uh, independent organizations like Energy Watch Group of Germany. And uh, what they've done is analyzed how much of the existing coal base, everybody agrees there's an enormous amount of coal in the ground, but they've analyzed how much of this coal base actually can be mined uh, at current market prices with current technology and they've come up with a very pessimistic estimate suggesting that uh, U.S. coal production could peak uh, in the estimation of Energy Watch Group as soon as 2030 or 2035. So by, okay, so by that year and even, even, even um, more, even closer in, in Appalachia, I understand. What about elsewhere in oh, China yes. and India? Yes, uh, uh, China's coal production could peak within the decade. India is already having coal supply problems. Of course, China uh, is using about twice as much coal as the U.S. and China's consumption is growing at almost 10% per year. So China is going to be in trouble very soon with regard to its coal supplies, and it's already starting to import coal from Australia. Now, the National Academy of, Academy of Sciences said long ago that the U.S. may not have nearly as much coal as is popularly believed. So if what you say is true, what, what is this telling you about all of the efforts being put forth to, uh, you know, to fund more coal research and to, to, to put funding into uh, making coal cleaner burning? Right. This puts the whole clean coal debate into an entirely different light because the clean coal advocates are assuming that we will have a almost limitless supply of cheap coal going forward for decades. Uh, if in fact coal is about to become more scarce and expensive within the next couple of decades, that means that clean coal just doesn't work. Uh, <clears throat> by the time we would develop the technology, which would be at least a couple of decades from now, coal's price would probably have doubled, tripled, could be even as much as five or six times what it is now. And if you add the cost for capturing and sequestering the carbon from coal, that would yield electricity prices much higher than any of the alternatives like solar power or wind energy. Well, I mean, certainly under any circumstance uh, that we're talking about, coal will become more expensive as an energy source, but won't everything? I mean, getting renewables to commercial scale with interstate transmission and turning to nuclear is hugely expensive. You know, what, uh, it's true of all energy sources. Well, that's true to a certain extent. With renewables, we will have to invest in an upgrade to our national electricity grid. However, with, uh, with time, renewables have tended to become cheaper. As we put more research into wind and solar, we find ways of producing the energy more cheaply. That's not true with fossil fuels because fossil fuels, of course, are non-renewable. And the, the low-hanging fruit syndrome applies. We've gotten the low-hanging fruit, the, the cheapest, highest quality resources, the resources that are easiest to access. We've gone after those first, and that's why in Appalachia, uh, Pennsylvania, we're seeing uh, coal production leveling off and beginning to decline. Uh, the same thing is going to happen inevitably in the Illinois Basin in Wyoming. So sooner or later, we'll have to go to renewable energy sources. We'll be much better off if we do that sooner rather than later. All right. Well, the debate goes on certainly with uh, coal at the center of our energy uh, the predicament. Richard Heinberg, author of Blackout and senior fellow with the Post Carbon Institute. Thank you so much. Good talking with you, Susan.